Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Potential of Sense. On today's episode, I'll be discussing superstitions. Before we start though, I would like to ask you guys a question. Did you know that sneezing is caused by someone calling your name? Did you, did you guys know that? Okay, for viewers that said yes, please make sure you watch to the end of this video. I have something very special for you. Number one. If you whistle at night, you will attract evil spirits. Okay, but what's the connection between a sound and evil spirits? Will clapping hands at night attract them as well? This is a very interesting one, so let's, let's go. <laughs> when I need someone to tell me is the exact thing that attracts the spirits, is it the sound or the pitch of the whistling? There are certain ultrasonic sounds that the human ear cannot hear, but dogs can. In a not so related kind of way, is whistling the only sound the evil spirits can hear? If yes, I wonder why it only attracts them at night though. Hmm. Oh, they must be sleeping during the day. I get it now. That said, what's responsible for all the bad things currently happening during the day that are attributed to evil spirits? We know they sleep during the day. So what has been causing these evil acts? Someone needs to investigate. On a serious note though, saying things like whistling at night attracts evil spirits, it's a belief that could have started for a myriad number of reasons. One of the reasons might have been the fact that some people weren't able to differentiate between correlation and causation. For example, if Mr. A is found dead and Mr. B says, Oh, I saw him last night. When I left him, he was whistling down that road. Mr. C might say, That road is dangerous, so I once heard something in the bush around there some night ago while I was whistling on my way home, but I quickly ran off before anything could come out to get me. And just like that, 1 plus 1 could be added together to get 119. Man walks down a scary, spirit infested road at night. The man was whistling and dies the next day. Well, it's obvious that the man was killed by the evil spirits he attracted while whistling on his way home, right? If he said right, you're wrong. Number two. When you sneeze, that means someone just called your name. Maybe right where you are or somewhere else. Okay. So I think that means that a man like Dangote, that, you know, with his name called everywhere. Remember that there's a song about it. Dangote, Dangote, you know, by Bonner Boy. So that means every the man was sneezing continuously. Now I've never met Dangote before, but I've seen him. Uh, I've seen him being interviewed, and he didn't sneeze at all, not even once. Hmm. I think maybe you know he's quite rich, right? So maybe he's found a way to hide the sneezing, or maybe he's paid some people to do it. Hmm. Maybe. Hmm. Hmm. This is another superstition that just doesn't make much sense. Sneezing is a physiological action that the body engages in unconsciously and spontaneously. There are factors that can induce sneezing though. Conditions like allergies, being ill with the flu and a couple of others make people more susceptible to sneezing when these underlying conditions are present. There are other times when a sneeze announces itself before the actual action takes place though. A state I don't quite know how to describe. A state where you feel the sneeze coming. You close your eyes, open your mouth, lift your neck and wait for it to make its way out. Sometimes it comes out and it feels so satisfying and other times it just doesn't come out and leaves tight silences, disappointment and dissatisfaction in its wake. In instances when the sneeze doesn't come true, I presume someone that's about to say your name change their mind midway, right? Like someone trying to call someone named Patricia and saying only Pat before changing your mind to either call someone else to make them sneeze or just keep quiet instead. Anyway, regardless of what promoters of this superstition say, the act of sneezing is not related to sound. And since it's not, how does calling your name induce sneezing? The simple answer is, it most definitely doesn't. Number 3. If your food falls to the ground, don't pick it up and eat it because the devil has eaten it. 
not because it's unhygienic. Yeah, the devil has come to your house or wherever the food is and he's looking for food to eat. He's so hungry. It's food that has fallen to the ground that is coming to eat. Okay, no problem. Let's go. What happened to telling people not to eat food that has fallen to the ground because it could be tainted with germs that can cause an upset stomach and diarrhea? Why are elaborate stories created to explain pretty simple things? Is it because people don't like easy explanations and need to be scared stiff before they do the reasonable or right thing? Merely thinking about it makes me tired. Or to put it colloquially, I just weak anyhow. Now, what I've always heard is that the devil is roaming around seeking whom to kill and destroy. But based on this superstition, it seems the devil is roaming around just looking for food to eat. Not just any food though, food that dropped to the ground. I honestly don't know if I should laugh or cry at this particular superstition. Laugh at the absurdity of it or cry because someone or a group of people thought the only way to stop others from eating food off the ground is to come up with something so ludicrous to explain it. The cherry on top is the fact that some people actually believe it. And that for me is just simply unbelievable. That's it for the superstitions in this episode. Uh, for anyone that has any that wants us to explore feature on a tincture of sense, can you let us know in the comment section or send an email to a tincture of sense at gmail.com. Now, um, back to the question I asked earlier at the beginning of this, the question about you know, sneezing being caused by someone calling your name. For the viewers that said, yes, they knew that sneezing is caused by someone calling one's name. I have something for you, like I said. It's a tincture. So I think you need to use one in the morning, one in the afternoon, one at night like this. One for morning, two for afternoon, three for night. So use it for seven to, uh, to ten days. You should be, everything should be fine after that, okay? On that note, I'll just say thanks for watching. Look out for our next video next week.